Praise God, Brother Robbie, and it is time to look at God being a liar. I'm defending the doctrine that I just taught in um, my last sermon, and it was about, um, it's this one about the powers that be in law, the natural and law, and there's a comment on here that I'm going to read it to you. I'm not going to show you the name, I don't want to, I don't want to go into that, um, um, asking first of all, could you tell me when did God's prophets go to hell? Because it said that um, you know there's a scripture talking about their weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And I said, oh yeah, I know that there's another one. I, I swear there's one more that um, that there is in there. But the thing is, is that. Um, I can only remember one right now. I've already gone over this, and I, I think about it sometimes. I haven't marked it down. There's a lot of things I keep missing on that. So anyways, without further ado, Balaam. The Bible calls it madness of that prophet. The madness of the prophet. He loved the wages of unrighteousness. The mist of the blackness of the darkness is reserved for him forever. And so Balaam, yes, was a real prophet, and he, he compromised. Uh, some of the prophets who failed died, like the prophet at the oak tree, which we'll look at in a second. And so that's the answer to that. And then um, another one he, a gentleman was concerned about was, um, does God lie? He says, you said that God lies. And that's right. I cannot agree with that. If God lies, he would, be going, he would be going directly against his own word, and he'd have to throw himself into hell um, for the fearful and unbelieving, and all that stuff, which we all know that liars don't go to heaven, of course, right? So this is nothing wrong with saying that. The thing is, it's kind of like what a gentleman says, his name is Frank Turek, talking about why does God have the right to kill? Because God is the author of life. Everything came from him. You know, it's like, what if you walked into the store at some antique store and you just threw a piece of antique down that was worth several hundred dollars and you'd look at like a monster. But if the owner of the store came in and did the exact same thing, it wouldn't make the same problem because it's his anyway. He can do with it as he pleases. Everything was made for God. And by him, but by him and for his own good pleasure, and he does with it as he pleases. So it's not this, he doesn't follow the same rules um, as his creation does. So same thing as when he wants to lie, he can lie. And it doesn't matter because it's his way of handling things in a justice situation, which we'll look at in a second. And um, so well, he wouldn't have to cast himself into hell because he's the boss. He doesn't. He can do whatever he wants. So. Here's the scriptures that people probably look at and say, no, God won't lie. I understand that. Praise God. Um, and just so happens we're talking about Balak here. So Balak and Balaam. Anyways, God is not a man that he should lie, neither that the Son of Man, neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Okay, so obviously this is where God doesn't lie. It also happens to say he should not that he should repent. He's not a man that he should repent. Okay, so keep that one in mind. And also here in First um, Samuel fifteen, and it's verse eleven. It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. So this is where God repents, and this is the exact same chapter where it's a different tense of the word repent. And here it is, God repents not, also, and also the strength of Israel, God, will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. So we've got two scriptures that say he won't lie nor repent, but here's where he says he repents of it. He repents of uh, making people in the first place in Genesis 6. And also that he repents of putting King Saul into place. Now that answer that, that brings up an interesting question, which I, I, I wouldn't be able to go too far into the answer of it. But why is God acting surprised? Like, why did I do that? You know, as if he didn't know the answer of it. And so I guess in one sense you could say, well, he's just communicating in a language that we can understand, even though, of course, he knows the end from the beginning. So don't really have an answer for that one. But here it says that he doesn't lie. Um, that he's not a man that should lie, nor that he should repent. Well, lying and deceiving and um, uh, stuff like this is all kind of the same thing. When you're trying to make someone not know the truth, that is, in a sense, a lie. And does God do that? 
people always attack Allah for doing that. Well, Allah should be attacked because he's the devil, okay? But God deceiving, he can lie, he can deceive, he can kill, he can repent whenever he wants to. He's not repenting in the same way, he's just repenting in the sorrowful way, he's not repenting of sin, so obviously there's a difference. But anyways, let's take a look at the strong delusions in the scripture. Though There is more. I remembered finding more, but I didn't document them down. Strong delusions in the Bible, okay? Um, 1 Kings 22, 23, 24, there's a lying spirit in the mouth of the 400 prophets, okay? Now, that's also, I think that's also the one in Chronicles 18, 20 to 21. When you see them um, trying to go... And find a way God's on the throne saying, how are we going to kill King Ahab? How, how are we going to do this? And and then one angel has one idea and it didn't go over well. But another one says, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of the false prophets. So they all think they're prophesying truth and prophesying by the spirit that was sent by God. But it was a lying spirit and God says, sure. So God was allowing that lie to go on. Ezekiel 14, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Okay, It's talking about if you follow the false prophet, um, you're gonna go. You're gonna be busted. You're doomed if you follow the false prophet. You follow them because you wanted to. And I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. It was me who helped that guy to be deceived. Same as you did the 400 before that. And Second Chronicles up here is the same one. Next, I said, okay. Second Thessalonians 2: 11 through 12. He's going to send a strong delusion that you may believe a lie. God wants you to believe a lie at certain times. He does help you lie. Prophet lied to another prophet by the oak tree. You remember when King. Uh, Jeroboam had two uh, golden calves and God sends a prophet to he's called the man of God to go and prophesy to him and Rehoboam excuse me Jeroboam's arm uh, shrivels up and he says I'll give you anything my kingdom just fix my hand and he fixes his hand and he says that your bones are going to be burned on the altar which happened when the king uh, Josiah came onto the, the, the scene which is really really cool but um and the prop, the prophet um, was supposed, the man of God was supposed to go home a different way, and not have bread or water with anybody. And another prophet chases him down, and sees him sitting by an oak tree, and says, "Have bread and water with me." And he says, "I can't have bread and water with you because all that's against the word of the Lord." He says, "No, I'm a prophet too." And the angel of the Lord says to go ahead and do it. He lied. The prophet lied to the man of God. First Kings thirteen eighteen, and then he ends up dying for it. And he was recognized later on as a great man. So it's really interesting. Second Kings 6.19, Elisha led the Syrians to Samaria. They, when they were blinded by the angels, um, here's Second Kings 7.6, the Lord made the Syrians hear the, hear the noise of the chariots. Was there any chariots there? Um, hardened Pharaoh's heart, even though Pharaoh hardened his own heart, God hardened Pharaoh's heart too. So God would make it so he couldn't see even more than he would have on his own. Uh, blinded the minds of Sodom. Oh, when, remember the angel spoke or did whatever he did and, destroy, and smote the guys so they couldn't see. So he's causing them to not be able to see. Um, that's actually physical seeing, so it's a little bit different than a heartfelt lie. But, they, but God helped them not know. Uh, make hearts fat, car, uh, ears heavy, and eyes shut. In Isaiah 6, so God helping people, their eyes to be shut and not be able to know things, make their ears hard, dull of hearing. When people don't want to do right, that's what happens to them. So yes, under one sense, he doesn't lie. Oops, he doesn't lie. Oh, it was earlier, we saw that another one, I already lost the page. And then here, he does lie, okay? He doesn't repent, and then he does repent. And it's kind of interesting how they mix the two together. The strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. He's not a man that he should repent. Okay. Well, obviously, there's a different tense of the word, and God does, under certain circumstances, lie. He does kill, does things that's against his own law because he's the boss. He can do whatever he wants. So, anyways, that's my response to does God lie and, and all that business. God bless you. Have a great day.